Not already. <laughs> 128 million US dollars. This is the life I want. Best decision of my adult life. Bro, oh, fun times, man. Oh, fun times. You were still in Nigeria. Yeah, point, I was still right? in Nigeria. Punches me in the face. I was like, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> I felt like a shark in a fish pond. I don't make myself a victim of circumstances. If he can do this, I can do. My life changed because I invested in the course. It's not really the niche, it's the demand. Bro, come join the winning team. One million subscribers in coming. <laughs> Abdul Kawi. Hello, it's sir. an absolute pleasure having you on the podcast today. Sir. How are you, brother? I'm fine. I'm in good spirits. <laughs> It's good. a pleasure to be here. Always in good spirits. <laughs> Look at <I> you. <laughs> so, Abdul, if you don't mind, I want to just start by giving everyone that doesn't know a very quick summary of your success or your recent success, should I say. So, age 21, yeah. you sold two e-commerce businesses for a total of 128 million yeah. US dollars. Yes. Now, at age 25, you own an education and consulting business, yeah. which generates you around 5 million yeah. US dollars per month. Yeah. And you're also documenting your journey while scaling your luxury wax brand, brand. Yeah. the Phoenix, to 100 million. million. Yeah. But you and I both know that it didn't start that way. Yeah. If anything, you maybe started at even more of a disadvantage than most people, being that you were born in, in a Nigeria. third world country, which was Nigeria. Yeah. And at age 14, yeah. you entered the freelance world yeah. online yeah. and you earned your first $50. From your freelance job. <laughs> yep. So that was age 14. Yeah. And now you've gone, you've gone from talking in single digits to, to millions <laughs> huh? in not, yeah, even, no not even 10 years. Yeah. So do you remember that, that first moment where you earned that first $50? I do. I do. So uh, it was 2013. Um, I had just got back from school. Uh, so in Nigeria, it's like you go to secondary school, which you guys call high school, and then you go to the university. But it was in between that period, I knew I didn't want the lifestyle my parents had. My parents are uh, regular normies. My mom, blood dressed as well, was a teacher. My dad was a university lecturer. And one thing Nigeria is known for is unpaid salaries for mm. <laughs> civil servants. So I stumbled across a guy called Jason Stone, popularly known as Milonia Mentor or on Instagram. He was my intro into the freelance world. So I bought his course and I remember vividly that it was my savings. So we call something Kolo in Nigeria. It's like piggy bank. Okay. You keep your money. I am known for saving a lot of my <laughs> money. Uh, I grew up on a frugal lifestyle. Uh, my mom sells UK used clothes. That's what we also got to wear. But I'd always known that if you're prepared and an opportunity comes along and you're willing to take that opportunity, it could change your life. My life changed because I invested in the course, right? So when people shit on cost sellers, I'm like, you don't know the advantage mm. <laughs> for others that are from the environment that I come from. So that's, that's just a little bit of backstory. And yeah, I made my first $50 online. I remember that day I, I told myself, this is it. Mm. This is what I wanted. So I took the money. It's USD, obviously. The, uh, I received it via MoneyGram. Went to, uh, we call it Sabo. It's exchange, uh, an exchange company. Broody Exchange, that's what we call it in Nigeria. I went there, changed the USD into Naira and put the money, add some dollars, by the way. I put the money in my cap and I took a picture of that moment. And I was like... This is the life I want. Yeah. Because back then, the exchange rate of $50 was higher than how much my parents give me monthly for school, which is for transport and for feeding. So roughly, let's just say $31 was for transport and $11 back then, as the exchange rate mm. back then was for feeding in a month. And, and I made $50 for one gig which was explainer videos those yeah. videos where you see an and writing and what i was going to say was your combined household income from both your parents yeah. was about 300 dollars a yes. month wasn't it yes and you've earned 50 dollars from a single like, job exactly yeah. and then it just went from there right didn't quite quickly you were what, what did it go up to about two thousand five hundred dollars yeah so i made two thousand five hundred dollars but i was one of the first nigerians to use fiverr and upwork and the platform just you know 
took Nigeria and stuff the place because people were also using it to commit fraud. Like uh, back then, you pay people and they work on the platform, but they get paid first before they deliver the job. So most people, deliver, they will get paid first and just shut down the account and go open a new account under different, you know, mm. names. Because when a platform is still fresh, they are still trying to get users and all of that. So there aren't strict rules. It's like running ads back in the days. It's different from running ads mm. right now, right? But yeah, it was crazy. So <sighs> in a few short months, you went from... So, and you were... 14 at the time? Yeah. Um, yeah, 2013. Uh, no, I was 15. 15. 15 yeah. So 15 and in a few sh- short months earned $2,500. Yeah. There's probably some men in Western countries that don't earn that in a month. Well, I would say because people would know I'm not shady. Like I have an insane work ethic. If I commit myself to something, I'll do it. And, you know, when you, you come from my kind of background, you never allow your back to stay on the ground, right? Like you don't, I don't make myself a victim of circumstances. I believe anyone can change the trajectory of their life as long as they know where they're going. So I think you're proof of that. (laughs) Yeah. So I decided to deliver on whatever I promised to clients. Now, when the platform took took us off, I went into Facebook groups and there were forums back in the day too. So I went on Facebook groups and I'll, search for keywords I need help with or I have a problem with. So obviously anyone who says that in the groups, they need solutions to whatever it is. So it's either I try to learn on the job. You, that's why I love YouTube University, man. Like there's so much you can learn on YouTube. And then there was U, uh, platforms like Udemy and all of that, Coursera. So I'll take courses on whatever I see. People have problems on copywriting, email marketing, Facebook ads. Like, and Google then also had like Google Skills for Africa, where you can learn how to run Google ads and all of that. And you get certified. So I took as many certification exams as possible. Uh, there was... Uh, something by Avad, I've, I've forgotten, but it's like an open, it's called MOOC. So like you can learn several stuff. And so I'll do that and just learn on the job, right? And I'll deliver stuff to clients. And because they see that I'm reliable, they were willing to do business with me. And, you know, word of mouth spreads. <clears throat> it's like when you have a very good A player in your team, you don't want to let go of that person, right? So yeah, I rose pretty fast and because I was also determined and I didn't really have any expenses so I could afford to invest into myself consistently. I was a young boy, didn't have like, I wasn't trying to impress anybody. (laughs) So yeah, that's how I did. I don't want to jump ahead too far, but you just said that you continued to invest in yourself. Yeah. So you didn't just learn one skill and stay in that lane. Yeah. You continue to invest in back into yourself yeah. and learn so many different skills. Mm-hmm. And that's still something you do now, if I'm right, right? Yeah. Mentoring, coaching. Yeah. So I think you can never know too much. Anyone yeah. would be naive to think that they of know course, everything. Of course, of uh, course. I believe in skill stacking. Yeah. I believe you shouldn't just be one dimensional. One like trick pony. Should, yeah, exactly. Like you should know a little bit of everything. So at least even if you were going to delegate something in your business to someone, you should at least be able to say, okay, I'm creating SOPs, like standard operating procedures of this is how you get this thing done. Mm. Right. And so they can then go ahead and do it. I don't want to babysit nobody, but I want to give you guidelines on this is how I love my stuff to be done. Yeah. Right. And then they can go ahead and just Get it done. So, yeah. And even, okay, so I paid a billionaire. I have a video on my YouTube channel where I paid a billionaire for five days to just shadow him and learn. Because my end goal is to also be a billionaire, right? In my own country, yeah, I'm a billionaire. But in USD, you know, I'm nowhere near mm. being a billionaire. Mm. And I feel if you want to learn something, just find those who have excelled at it and yeah. go pay them. Like, you either pay with two things. You pay with your time or you pay with your money. Mm. People who are at the lowest rank of society end up paying the most with their time. But the smartest people, they leverage money. Money gets you into the room. Money gets you the right connections. Money gets you the right A players. Money is the biggest leverage. And if you're smart, you play smart. You don't try to work hard. And that's that's my thing. And speaking about um, not selling your time. Yeah. That's, I think, at the point where you got deplatformed from Fiverr. Yeah. When you acknowledged that, didn't you? And you realized you can sell products yes. through e-commerce, yes. which again is leveraging products or on a store that sells 24 hours a day. Exactly. Uh, making money while you sleep, yeah. essentially. Yeah, it, it's crazy because, I mean, <clears throat> I 
was making money freelancing and for someone from Nigeria, it was good money. Cause like, bro, back then I remember my end goal was to make $18,000 a year. Mm. Not, I wasn't looking for anything crazy. It was just, I want to make $18,000 a year. But you know, there's this quote that uh, around the four minute mile that oh, everybody believed you couldn't run a four minute mile uh, mm. until Roger yeah. Bani studied it, right? And then when I saw Trailer and made, one million dollars in 24 hours i was like who the fuck is this guy <laughs> right like if this is possible i want to learn yeah, whatever yeah. it is that yeah. he's doing and he sold f- led lights for god's sake like flashlights uh yeah. in the survival niche i'm like if he can do this i can do the same thing right mm-hmm. and i had studied direct response marketing like oguv i had studied double man dan like all the ogs of technicolors of you know direct response marketing and if there's anything i've observed is the best market to sell to sells to insecurities pain right like mm. we make 99 percent of our decisions around pain than the one percent around pleasure it's after you've fulfilled like all the painful things in your life that you now say okay now nah, i want to enjoy the, this the necessities exactly. versus the luxuries exactly right? so i did that and i started in ecom but i also didn't have access to payment gateways. And so I had to partner with a guy that I met on the forum uh, back in the days. I'm like, no, it's so easy. There are Discord groups and everything you can join. But then it was just forum. And he was an Irish guy. Uh, the goal was he would take 20% of the profit that we make, but everything will be processed through his account. Like the entire stuff was set up in his name. And we made $100,000 and the guy just ran away with the money. Wow. And it was very very devastating but one thing about me is bro like if life punches me in the face i was like oh you motherfucker I'm gonna suck <laughs> punch you. right because when you know what is possible and you've tasted it fine that money didn't come to my account but i'd seen the numbers on the dashboard and i believe once you've seen something once you've experienced something it changes the way you view the, yeah. uh, everything in life right like yeah. you can't say and it's the reason why millionaires will always be millionaires regardless of how many millions they lose because they know how to get back up there. So yeah. like you win a lottery, but if you've done something over and over again, it will be possible. So my extensive knowledge in marketing really helped me. Uh, and then I started over again and the initial products that we sold was fidget spinners, but for autistic kids. So okay. it helps their high to hand concentration and it helps them focus a lot more. And then I started my brand. The second brand that I started was around women who had postpartum image issues. They didn't like how their body looks like after childbirth. And so it was a shapewear brand. And boy, it went crazy. Like, <laughs> holy shit. It was way before Spanx or anything yeah, like yeah. that. And we hit the market real hard with influencer marketing and all of that. You know, back in the day, it was so easy. You could just eat up an influencer who, even a micro-influencer who had like 10,000 followers but were engaged. And mothers are always looking for reference from other mm. mothers. Like, you don't see a bald man going to a man who is with the full hair on, oh, what did you do? But if he sees a previous bald man with it, full hair, it would be willing to listen to that, yeah. right? So mothers always converse with others and they have same problems. So if your product is able to deliver to them. And I love this book, The Bezos Letters. It's now that, I, like I read it last year or two years ago, but I discovered I was applying the same principle that Amazon, that Jeff Bezos used to build Amazon to a trillion dollar company. That's what I was applying then because I focused more on the customer experience and also focused more on making sure that my customers became brand ambassadors for whatever it is we were selling, right? And yeah, yeah that made the brand very, very successful. Then mm-hmm. the second brand I started was also around insecurities for shorter guys who were dating. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I sh- always hear from girls, taller girls that, oh, like, short guys are always after us. So it's like, okay, fine, let's, let's solve this need. Yeah. And we started Invisol, <clears throat> which was a brand that added three inches to a man's height. And the, it's like, you just pad it to any shoe that you have and instantly you're 
<laughs> I've, been taller. I've been targeted yeah. with them ads. I don't know why. I'm yeah. six foot three. I don't know what they're trying to say. But I, I'm not yours necessarily, but uh, in recent months yeah. on Instagram, yeah. the, uh, I've seen them. I've exactly. Seen them. So we did that. And that one was the one that was my big break. That was the brand I had my first million dollar uh, month, million dollar week, million dollar day. Yeah. No way. You did, so you so, did a million dollar day as yeah. well. And this was what happened. So a guy, you know, Vine was popular back in the days, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And a comedian from, I think it was Slovakia or something, he did a skit where he approached a girl. It's short. It's like five, seven. He approached a girl that was like six foot and above. And he first went to her. She didn't pay attention to him. It was like at that boob level <laughs> and then later he wore a shoe and the sole with the shoe and he approached that and she's like smiling and yeah, warm yeah. to him and everybody's like wait what so it's led to curiosity like people were yeah. asking what exactly happened right here it, mm. it felt magical to everyone and he just plugged it was not paid or anything he just plugged the link to the website and boy we it was 1.19 million dollars that we did the first that day we did one point off the, off of, for, off of for a vibe. one video it, the video had like 120 million views that's crazy because i mean when you think about it people are looking at this and they are thinking what exactly is going on so they are commenting and it's pushing the video yeah, yeah, yeah. deep into the algorithm and what does the algorithm like engagements right mm. and so we ended up reaching out to him and we are like we'd like to license this your image and likeness would want to get that and we'll give you a commission. So he was more than willing to do it because mm. back then they only make money off of like brand deals and all of that. There wasn't really any crazy monetization or, or stuff like that. So we're paying him, I think, 5% of the sales. But bro, 5% of uh, a million is a lot crazy. of money. So he end, ended up collabing with a couple of his friends who were yeah. short. It was like, <laughs> you know, uh, there's this, Thing. is this cinderella no no there's there's a anime there's a cartoon with the seven dwarfs or something i forgot oh, the name white and the yeah, seven dwarfs, Snow white yeah. and the seven dwarfs so they created something similar to Snow white and the <laughs> seven dwarfs it was like short guys and all of them started wearing the stuff and it was like the biggest proof you could mm. ever have people are seeing it and, and we just Plug that into pay that. This guy was a, did you say a comedian or he just created yeah, he a skit? Was, no, he was a, he was a comedian, skit, skit maker, comedian, yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. really crazy. But yeah, he had a huge audience. And obviously, because we're also pushing, we're, we're now running ads through his account. Mm. So he's getting more On views. Yeah, we, we were, he was getting more views. We used the, we downloaded the videos, used it across the platforms even Facebook back in the day, like we made him, we created an omnipresence for him, right? So mm. it was also this advantage. He was getting more followers. He was getting seen by more people in different countries now than just where he was from and all of that. But that was great, but it also comes with its own challenges. Okay. We sold out the entire manufacturing inventory that we had. <laughs> like, it was crazy. We had backed up orders for, I think, three months. Were you taking stock or drop shipping? No. Okay, so we were taking stock initially for yeah. that. Uh, but we... So I, I, I always tell people that drop shipping is great for testing out products until you have a ton of orders it's best to be the brand around it mm. once you know that yeah, you're already getting to like the $50,000, $100,000 mark. Like mm. if you're doing $100,000 a month and you're still dropshipping, I don't know what you're doing. Because at that point, your margins are super thin. You're also thinking of how long it would take for customers to get stuff. I don't want to deal with issues of getting shut out by a merchant account i don't have any way around it yeah. <laughs> i set up my company in the usa but still once you lose the account pff, you're done yeah. for right yeah. so i had to make sure that we found ways to circumvent losing uh merchant accounts and all of that so we ended up taking stock and we you did start warehouse. as dropship initially yeah, we started once drop you got proof of concept got, yeah exactly you started taking stock of those products exactly. and then you rebranded exactly yeah so we went First, we did private labeling and eventually we had to like set up a warehouse ourselves. 
Yeah, bro, fun times, man. I'll fun bet. times, I'll fun bet. times. And you were still in Nigeria. At this yeah, point, I was still right? in Nigeria, right? So like, you and you were doing a, a million a month in sales, million. Yeah, a, a the day? thing is, I what most people don't understand is for you to get to the next level is three things, right? Um, six figures. It's more about figuring product market fit, mm-hmm. right? Then six to seven figures is more of systems and your operations and also making sure that the customer experience is great. And then seven figures to eight figures is creating great leaders within the company Mm. to make sure that they can replicate what you do. Because I believe if you can get a company to seven figures, then go find rock stars and pay them the best amount of money possible and allow them handle different roles, right? And so, yeah, like... Eight to nine figures now is a different beast entirely. Yeah. It's more about making sure that one, brand name is solid, making sure that two, the uh, executives within the companies make the right decisions. It's not about how many decisions you make, but it's the quality of the decisions that you make within that period of time. Yeah. Then cash flow, making sure that you never lack cash flow. Funny yeah. enough, I've never taken out any external funding before. We make sure that we create such an amazing experience for our customers to the point where our customers become the best ambassadors for mm. the brands that we build. So community is very, very big. Two things I, I want to ask you, if you don't yeah. mind. So first you were touching on uh, the growth of a business. Yeah. yeah. Five to six figures, six to seven, yeah. seven to eight, and then yeah. eight to nine. Yeah. Where did you learn all of that? Was it just a natural progression or did that also come from courses and mentorship? Because it's a it's a progression, right? Yeah. But in your instance, a very quick one. Yeah. Because you, you had to learn fast, yeah. right? I, I feel like some yeah. things can't be taught. Some things can be learned. Some things can be taught. Um, for me, fine, I joined the masterminds, but I was in a very, very unique circle because I'm from Nigeria, right? A white guy can't really relate to the struggles and challenges that I'm facing. So I had to always be on my toes and think miles ahead. And I, I do say something that because I'm Nigerian and from where I'm from, um, if a white guy will take something and accomplish it in a year, I have to work 10,000 times harder to accomplish that same thing within that time frame. Right. Uh, so I had to learn a lot of things on my own. Of course, I pay to avoid errors as much as I can. I will always invest in masterminds. I'll always invest in people who are way ahead of me. But certain things can't be taught. Yeah. You have to learn it yourself. Yeah. Right? Make the mistake. So yeah, I made my mistakes. I've, pff, I made stupid mistakes, money mistakes, mindset issues. Uh, because people forget that when you are new to something, you don't really know how to handle it until you've learned your way. It's like, I just bought a bike, right? I've fallen twice really? while riding my bike, but I won't make the same mistakes that led me to my fall now, mm. right? So it's the same way um, I had to learn a couple of things and because I was in a unique situation, I had to figure out, okay, how do I go about it in this way? When I set up my company then, it was $15,000 I paid to set up in the USA. Now you could set it up for like, well, $150 or mm. whatever. It's crazy, but yeah, I had but, to figure it out myself. So, And what I'd love to know as well is, how did you first identify those products? You said you went more on um, emotionally led products, like things that people need and there's a necessity, but yeah. how did you go about identifying those particular products? Yeah, so you know back in the day there was Facebook audience insights there were like, that you could even know how much household income people have when their birthdays are coming up. Um, also, there was a, uh, wait, I'm trying to remember. Shit, there's, there's a website and I, I, thought, I thought it's in my e-com course. I thought, uh, uh. <laughs> there's, there's a website that you can go on, they've even discontinued it. Okay. Where you can find uh, the best selling products in any country, they've uh, okay. they've, they've discontinued it. Uh, it was like we used it then because we used to run native ads too, right? So I probably remember later on. That's okay. Anyways, uh, another thing is I just understand that when okay, it's like when do people visit the dentist? 
is it when they feel healthy gums or when they are in pain? Mm. They visit most times when they are in pain. And they'll pay extra. And they'll pay, exactly, yeah. right? Because they want comfort at that point. They want to get rid of that pain. So I just figured, wait, I need to sell to people who have purchased bar, one, and then two, have something they will pay money to solve the problem immediately, right? And I remember, I think there was a video I saw back then. It was an athlete who had just given birth and she was complaining bitterly about how childbirth had affected her performance overall as an athlete. I think she was she was a tennis star or something. Uh, I'll probably remember something Figueroa or so. I've forgotten her name. And she was talking about that. So I did my findings on how does this really work? I'm not a woman, so I definitely don't know what it feels yeah. like to be a woman. <laughs> uh, so I had to do my findings and I discovered that it's a really crazy market. Like these people will pay any amount. That's even when I learned of uh, Tommy Talk, that people do mommy makeovers. Mm. <laughs> that is, they don't like how they feel. So our angle was cheaper than a Tommy Talk, cheaper than a mommy makeover and get your confidence boost immediately so it was very very catchy yeah. it was very very af it was affordable comp because we're doing apples to oranges we're comparing the cost of a tummy talk to the cost of our product mm. so it's like okay you can get the same look <laughs> without going under the knife and risking your life right yeah. and that just boils down back to direct response marketing yeah. like understanding what emotions you can trigger in people to get them to take actions immediately and yeah that's the, I think that's the age I had. <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely. And would that have been on Shopify as well? Yeah, it was on Shopify. Yeah, so you learned all of these skills along the way, like building the Shopify store, how to do the research, the direct yeah. response marketing, yeah. setting up the ads. Yeah. Although I think it's probably very different setting up a meta ad these days. Like you yeah, said, there was audience course. targeting and yeah. all sorts. I can only imagine what the CPMs <laughs> must have cost back then. I bet you had crazy rise. <laughs> yeah, you know, we would spend like 10 Then, you know, they, they used to, teach $10 a day ads where you can target people and everything. You can even target Facebook groups uh, so back in the day, right? Different. So, yeah, and you could also scrape groups and then upload it to Facebook uh, and then create lookalike audiences, custom audiences. Do you, so, <laughs> it would be, do you think, well, I think, I know it would be, but I'd be interested to know, it would be different if you were to try and launch that same brand today, but do you think you could still do it? Of course. Once you've done it, once you can do it, yeah, I yeah. would even do it a lot faster and better. That's why I'm documenting building this one. And it's also just for proof of concept. Like, I want to prove to myself that, okay, I've done it before and I even did it without my face being known. Like, mm -hmm. no one knew who I was and shit like that. And it also boiled down to the insecurity I had. I had acne and then I felt like, okay, I'm a Nigerian, a black guy in a space like this. And it's trust. You're dealing with a market that relies heavily on trust mm. they no one would trust you to assess their body if they don't believe in you right yeah and there were just too many barriers and i wasn't willing to risk it back then uh but now i'm documenting taking a brand to 100 million dollars and why do i even say 100 million dollars is just to prove that yo i can do this shit yeah. right and yeah i'll do it faster and better plus with ai and all these things we yeah, have yeah. now Hell yeah, I'll do it a lot faster <laughs> with that, of course. So to someone who's maybe watching this and thinking about a good niche to get into, yeah. maybe they should look into... Beauty, else, like, you see, any, I do say it's, it's not really the niche, it's the demand. Gary Albert will say, find a hungry or starving audience and you never run out of money. So you're going to sell in any niche, sell any products. How you, do you identify demand? One, you look at where people are already spending money. Like, you can't create an hungry crowd. You have to find where they are. It's like, if you, if you have the best bait and you go fishing, if fishes don't even stay in that place, like, it's like taking a bait to a swimming pool. <laughs> you will never mm. catch fishes there, mm. right? Because fishes don't stay there. Mm. Um, so I feel like, one, okay, there was something I used to do back in the day. On Amazon, there's something called Amazon bestsellers, Amazon movers and shakers. Uh, it shows, like, the 24-hour volume of products that are sold on Amazon. And Amazon is the largest e-commerce website in the world, right? Now you can't compete with Amazon because they deliver on convenience, ease of access, and also like speed. So quick, to, right? so quick. So you're not competing with Amazon, but you could learn from how Amazon 
markets to the consumer and just build a brand around the same thing, create an experience. People don't buy products, people buy experiences. Like, why would someone spend $300,000 on a car that can get them from point A to point B when they can spend $10,000 on a car that will get them? Like, prestige status appeal to emotions, mm. right? There's this book called Casuatizing. If you read it, you understand it, you should make a good amount of money for yourself. What was it called? Cool story? Casuatizing. Casuatizing. Yeah, casuatizing. Uh, it's like a lesser condensed uh, version of breakthrough advertising. Mm -hmm. So if you can read that and you apply the principles, because some people just read for the dopamine, eat. I would say read and execute, right? Yeah. Read and execute on it and it, it will transform everything for you. So. <laughs> yeah, amazing. So just to get back to where you're at then in this journey at yeah. that point, <clears throat> you would have been, when you're doing these million dollar months, yeah. How old were you then? My 18? first million dollar month, I was 19, yeah. 19? Yeah. And it continued that way. Yeah. And then did someone approach you by the time you were 21, yeah. interested in purchasing? Yeah. Or how did that happen? So uh, it was by a mastermind. And, you know, people are always like brokering deals and all of that. And it just felt great because one, I was in Nigeria and I felt like a shark in a fish pond. I wanted to change the environment, I wanted to travel the world. And this wasn't any more challenging. Like I could take a brand, even right now, I can take a brand from zero to a million in 90 days. Like it was just that easy for me. Mm. And I love challenges. And I'd been documenting my journey on Twitter. So 2018, I started taking Twitter serious. Like I came out of the ghost mode. I was, mm. <laughs> so I started sharing my insights. Um, so this person had been following me on Twitter for a while and was also they do mergers and acquisitions right and then i signed up for a mastermind and a conversation led to the other and i felt like yeah these people can take the brand to a better place than i will where i'm at but i'd already created the necessary foundations for them to scale it to like <laughs> billion dollar mark whatever the the company that acquired it now is called six feet tall or something so they are doing a great job with the brand image and everything, you know, but he, your brand is like your baby. You never want to leave it with someone who wouldn't handle it the right way. Yeah. So it just felt like right timing. And I also wanted to explore. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do this sale. And it was amazing. So 21 years old, mm -hmm. sale goes through 128 <laughs> million. Bro, best Okay, nah. My first, <laughs> my, my first fifty dollars was better an experience than the one twenty eight mil. But the one twenty eight mil, I, I, you know, it wasn't like you just get a lump sum of one twenty eight mil immediately in the account. It's like you get the money in bits and bits and bits. Uh, but the last chunk of it was in crypto, so it wasn't really anything crazy. It was, but when I saw it, I was like. I'm made. Yeah. <laughs> I'm made. And, and that's at 21 years old. And at this Bro. point, you're still in Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. So, I mean, give my naivety, but would that have just made you one of the wealthiest men in Nigeria or is there wealth beyond that? Bro, for my age range, yeah. <laughs> I'm a fucking baloney. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, so for context, right now in Nigeria, a billion... Naira is less than a million dollars. Like that's like eight hundred thousand or something. Mm -hmm. And you don't even need a billion naira to live comfortably. Like mm -hmm. with with thirty to forty thousand dollars a year from a middle class or a low income family, that's good money. So imagine now getting a windfall of one twenty eight mil. And don't forget that I've been making money before the sale. Like, it's because of the consistency of the money that the brand was doing that made the valuation that high, right? It was more money than I could have ever thought of. Mm. Like, I, I tried to make people understand that, bro. My dream was to make $18,000. Yeah. $18,000. Add a few more zeros onto year. that. <laughs> 18000 The The time I made a million... I had sleepless nights because everything that was going in my head is, 
is this money going to disappear or what? Like, it's, it's just money in the bank account. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I even remember the first time I knew I was a millionaire in Naira was when I went to the bank. Because, bro, I don't really, I mean, regular guy i just have a lot of money but i'm a, I'm a normal dude i went to the bank and they froze they had frozen my account in nigeria and i'm like why are you freezing my account they said because of suspicious activities like you have a student account why do you have this much money in your account i'm like i don't know how much is in my account i just know i receive money yeah. every month and they were like no nah, you have to tell us what is it you do because they had suspicions that maybe i was a fraudster or anything i'm like i don't do fraud i can show you my dashboard this is what i do mm. the bank manager said you have to teach my son what it is you do <laughs> <laughs> he said well and if he's you know if he's ready i'll give him resources and all of that he'll be able to learn but yeah man i i say that money doesn't make people money just amplifies who you are as your core yeah so if you're a shitty person and you have a lot of money, bro, you'll be a douchebag. And if you're a great person and you have a lot of money, it just makes it easier for you to do the things that you want. So, well, I can tell you were a great person <laughs> before because you don't stop smiling. You know, yeah. you're always a happy, happy, happy guy. So. Bro, like, see, when you've been through the circumstances I've been through in life, and you overcome it, you'll be ungrateful to not thank god yeah like sure. my parents divorced when i was eight years old i had to man up become a man to take care of my mom and my sis um and then i lost my mom last year like when that happened i felt like my world had shattered because she was my best friend um and i'm here right like when you are thankful you get more like, bro, it's not even money for me anymore. It's just impact. Mm -hmm. Being able to show others that this is possible. I get tons of messages every single day from people that just makes my heart warm. Like, I'm glad I'm able to be, shine a light in the world. And, yeah. Do you feel as though that's your purpose now? It has always been. I feel like I've always had a bigger purpose than I am <laughs> since I was very, very young. Um and yeah the main reason i even started creating content online in the first place even on twitter was because i wanted to show young nigerians and young africans that you don't have to do fraud to make money mm. for yourself there's money that you can make with peace of mind where you don't have to worry about looking over your shoulder that yeah. the police is coming after you or anything as long as you don't fuck anyone over and you yeah. deliver on your words then hell yeah god blesses but it Having that kind of money in your account, did you have to look over your shoulder when living in Nigeria or was it okay? I, I was never a flamboyant person, even in Nigeria. Like, I wanted to buy a Range Rover Vela back yeah. then. I ended up buying a Toyota Solar. I used to, I was making 200k a day and I was riding my bicycle to the university. Really? Yeah. So you were definitely living below your means? I don't have any major expenses. Like, I don't. <laughs> what about, what about now? <laughs> Well, now, nah. <laughs> it's different. Um, now, I feel, even my expenses are low. You know, I wanted to make a video because uh, I saw a guy, Blake, on TikTok make a video about how much money I make in a month and this is what I spend. And I'm like, if I make a video, this will just laugh because I don't really have any crazy expenses. Mm -hmm. I love supercars. So I always like, if I want a car, I always get a car. I just bought a bike. I just moved into a new house. Like, these are things that, fulfill me i don't do it for any external validation i do it because i genuinely enjoy these things um but my i still live below my means yeah. a lot below my means than most people yeah would yeah so at you would be 21 years old you sold the company and then yeah. was it at that same point you then moved to dubai or shortly after yeah so I was already planning my trip to... Oh, so I moved to Estonia. Because okay. then Estonia was more... Like, it's the... I think one of the first countries in the world to accept crypto as a means of transactional stuff. And so I went there. I wanted to get the IE residency. Uh, but it was so fucking cold. Mm. Oh, my cold days, winter. bro. Like, it's so cold. And I'm anemic. Like, I'm, I'm low on blood iron. And so I'm like, nah, I don't want to be here. And since I was always going to everywhere, I was talking about Dubai, I visit Dubai, visit Dubai. So I was like, let's go see what this hype is about. 
I came here and I fell in love with it. I bet you did. Oh, best decision of my adult yeah. life. Like, what? This city? Yeah. Trust me, if I was in Nigeria, I would never have met. <laughs> yeah. Was it difficult getting residency here initially then? No, it wasn't difficult because thankfully I took advice of my friend. When I got here, I, I was about to leave and he told me, get your residency. So even if you want to come in again, you'll be able to come in without applying for a visa. I took that advice six months after they banned Nigerians from visiting Dubai. Really? Yeah. And then later they lifted it. They were like, okay, you have to be 45 and above for you to come in. That was when I was able to fly my mom into Dubai. She was so thrilled. She told me that was the best experience of her life. I'm glad I did that for her before she died. And then after, I was supposed to bring my sister in, but she was writing her exams in uni. And so I couldn't do that. And they just banned Nigeria. It's like, it's crazy. But now being Nigerian in Dubai is tougher than now, but I'm grateful. And at what point did you start the Phoenix? Oh, so Phoenix has always been an idea I've had since 2016. I love watches. I believe like a man's outfit is not complete without a watch. <laughs> and so... I don't look at my wrist then. <laughs> <laughs> but Phoenix represents the underdog. Everyone who has come from nothing to build a life of significance for themselves. So it's like the 5% that who are pushed through everything that was made to break them, but didn't break. And I just felt like I was in the right environment to execute on the vision that I had for it. And when I got to Dubai, I started working, piecing everything together. And we had like the first run with it. I love to work out, obviously. So I, I was testing it. I wanted to make sure it had proper functionality. Could go under the water, could go to the gym with it, everything possible and make sure it still lasts. And yeah, we did that. And but right now we have 315,000 subscribers on the wait list and we just do drops like 400 pieces um, every four, wait, yeah, every four months because we do drops thrice a year and it's just 1,200 pieces in a year mm. and that's the thing. And how do you create such a demand for that? Because 315,000 people on our wait list, so I'd assume certain amount of them get selected to potentially purchase or yes. do they all get the opportunity to no so you have to be on the wait list for you to get access to the drop and the demand was largely through my own personal brand which is why i'm grateful that i'm taking it serious now uh when you go on my page you see sold two brands for 128 mil and then building phoenix watches to 100 mil plus it has appeared in a lot of my videos like my watches I always in my videos and it just goes with my life like product placement is super important and i don't need to do too much everyone sees it oh what watch is that mm. it's my watch brand go check it out they go check it out and now you can't buy it unless you're on the wait list yeah. and so they know they have to sign up to the wait list and so that just drove the man to add video, my story on how i went from zero to 250 mil on youtube that did like 250,000 views or something. And I talked about the watch. It was also in the video. So yeah, that led to demand for it. Mm. But yeah, I'm trying to keep the community very, very exclusive. It's like the top elite people in the world that yeah. are able to have access to it. But they've also built it themselves. So they appreciate the value. So you get this to say, I'm grateful for where I'm at. And did you mention something about qr code being on the back yeah so the next development that we have is going to have qr codes behind it and when you scan it you'll be able to access you know events meetup i it imagine my interest so i love supercars mm. and i love nice watches so it's like when i start throwing events from next year and all of that when you're a member of the phoenix club you'll be able to come into the events at a much more discounted rates than the rest of the world like so yeah it's like the a very very niche yeah. club but uh, very very carefully selected people that get access to it mm. yeah and how how do you how do you do that how do you what does that selection process look like well we are planning to create like a membership club first mm -hmm. and then we assess people based on different things like the appeal of their story because everyone who rocks phoenix is representing the brand and we don't just want anybody to represent the brand 
right? So we have to look at their story, what they've accomplished themselves, and also where they are going. So you need to have vision, you need to have clarity, and you need to have a story. So all three of that combines to make sure that yes you're the right fit for this you know just it's like if you want to get an emmy's bag or you want to get like a rm you need to be on a certain level for you to have that right yeah. for you to get a ferrari stradale you need to be at the certain level for you to get that right so exactly it's the same thing like it's very very exclusive for the people that are deserving for the man who dares to be what was the slogan there? For the man who dares to be. The man who dares to be. Yeah. And it, it sounds as though, from what you've been saying, that the, the brand truly is a reflection of you. You described it as the underdog, and I think it relates to your story and yeah. where you've come from and what you've been able to achieve. So yeah. is it very much a passion project for you? Yeah, it is. That's your it baby. Is a, yeah. Yeah. It is, <laughs> yeah. It is a passion project. And I feel like the world is not ready for what we are coming with. Oh, okay. I'm looking forward to watching the journey <laughs> yes, then. Sir. So we got the Phoenix coming through. Yeah. And uh, also, not only that, you've also got your education and consultant business yeah. as well. So is that, well, maybe you could speak a little bit more on exactly what yeah. that is and, and the sort so, of people that you help. So the vision is, this is how I'm going to be a billionaire. I am creating a community where I'm documenting how I'm building this to the $100 million mark, but they get to watch how in real time. Imagine if... Elon Musk documented how Tesla was being built before it mm -hmm. is what Tesla is today, right? So it's like modern day MBA, but in real time access yeah. to knowledge, data, and everything from breakdowns of this is what is working for us. So you can go ahead and apply it to build your own brands. Yeah. And so the first, I, I'm still trying to peg a number at it, but like the first 25 to 50 people who get to the million dollar mark We'll put them in a, it's like an incubator stage to get to the $5 million mark. And then I'll show those who get to the $5 million mark how to get to 50 million mm. annual revenue. Yeah. And you can sell for like at least 3x, 4x multiple. So if they sell for 200 mil each, <clears throat> 25 people will sell at 200 mil each. That's like 5 bill, mm. right? And if I take 20% stake in that, that's like 250 mil for myself, yeah. right? So if it's 50 people, 500 mil, it's easy to turn 500 mil to a billion yeah. real quick. Right? Yeah. So yeah, that's the long-term play. So I am focused on making sure people actually get results by seeing how I'm building my brand. And also it's, it's, it's pennies on a dollar for them to lend, like $149 a month, $970 a year. It's nothing crazy because I have... Other offers where people pay $25,000, $50,000 for VIP days to learn from me. But this is super accessible to anyone from around the world who wants to learn how to build actual brands and see the brand that is being built. So it's not, oh, I made $1 million and you can't see how the $1 million was yeah. made. Right. So yeah, I want to show people what's because that's what everyone wants to know, right? Exactly. The one million's not well, not the vanity metric, but yeah. that's like the figure. Everyone wants to know how you did it. You exactly. know, you mentioned earlier SOPs, team yeah. building, going from five to six figures, six to seven. It's a progression. There's exactly. so much, so many nuts and bolts inside the machine that yeah. people don't see exactly. on surface level. Yeah. You know, so I think something like that would be very, very useful to a lot of people that are looking to build brands. Yeah. So, so that, that's how, the focus now. How can people find you or reach out if they potentially want to be involved in that? Same well, across socials, the Abdul Kowi on Instagram, the Abdul Kowi on YouTube. I'm doubling down on that. And they can always like check my links and bio or just DM me e -com or yeah. comment e -com on any of my videos. You'll be sent details and bro, come join the winning team. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm tempted. <laughs> <laughs> Come join the team, but yeah, I just want to make sure that everybody gets to see what's possible. Yeah, the internet changed my life. I'll probably be a high school teacher. No shit to high school teachers, but yeah, from Nigeria, chasing the dream, good buddy. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I think you're definitely one of few, and you're living proof of you know what can be possible if you're willing to put the work in. Of course. Life comes with challenges, but hey, if you just settle for being a mediocre person, then <laughs> you never get anywhere. I'm worried, but I'm happy being worried in my own way. I don't want to fit in. I don't want to operate by the rules or the norms because I'm not normal, right? 
So I forged my own path, went after it. It comes with its own challenges, being called a scammer, being called a fraudster. Like, bro, I've never scammed you. Why are you calling me a scammer? But I don't allow people's opinions influence who I am. Like, I am already who I am. You are just projecting <laughs> what you think. Yeah. But it doesn't change anything at the end of the day because, hey, Abdul Kaw is here. He's here, here to stay. Adapt to it or fuck off. <laughs> 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 on that note <laughs> yeah well Abdul it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the podcast thank you I man. really enjoyed that story I think this is the podcast I've spoken the least but I was just so indulged in what you were saying it's very very enjoyable so yeah, thanks, thank man. you very much and for you sharing you asked me questions so thank oh, you oh thank you you made it very easy you've got an interesting story so I didn't need to ask much it's, <laughs> thanks, uh, it's been a great podcast yes, so sir. thank you very much really appreciate you coming on yes, uh, for anyone that wants to find you you're on YouTube, on Instagram. Instagram. I think you're on TikTok yeah, as well. We're about Twitter. to distribute on TikTok like crazy Instagram. So, one million subscribers incoming. <laughs> <laughs> you went Bane, Bane voice then, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're not ready. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah um, I can't wait to see where it's at. Like a year, two years from now. The name will be an household name. 100%. Well, I'm excited to see the journey and Seriously. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Abdul. <laughs> Cheers.